Alrighty, so I know I've been pretty non-existent in the YouTube world recently. I don't think I've posted a video in over a month. I've just been crazy busy, a lot's been going on, haven't had the time to make a video, quality video, and I really haven't had much drive to make a video. But today, I'm alone at the house, it's a very nice day, smoking a cigar, well, at the end of it, have some coffee, and... It was recently my birthday, so I, I bought this Case Sodbuster Jr. in carbon steel. And I was just very curious on how fast it would take a patina cutting an apple. No, not the most acidic fruit, but I remember with Case's chrome vanadium, the CV steel, like this large stockman, If you even if you looked at, at the steel, it would patina. Uh, it took a patina very easily. And I was just wondering if that was the same thing for Case's new this carbon steel. I think people say it's 1095. Case won't really say it is 1095. They just label it as carbon steel. But who knows? All I know is it's not the same as Case's old CV steel. But I mean, I love this jumbo stockman pattern from Case. Very cool. Love that amber peach seed jigged bone man this large stockman pattern i'm loving i've had this one for about a year used it on and off i do oil the blades because from my experience cases steel will patina and rust in <laughs> overnight if you don't take care of it but this is my first sod buster in carbon steel and i just wanted to Peel an apple, cut an apple, and let's see if it develops a patina in this short video. I did wash this blade because I wanted to get all the factory oil and junk off the blade, so nothing will interfere with the patina process. Um, recently, and I'll, I'll just kind of ramble on as I do this. I'm going to peel the skin first. So hopefully I can do this without cutting myself. It's kind of difficult filming and cutting at the same time, making sure that the knife is captured in the video. But recently I've been kind of downsizing my my knife collection. I think I had over 120 or 130 traditional knives and recently I've been reducing that and selling the ones that I just don't carry or don't really want to carry because whatever reason, so I kind of convinced myself to sell those knives on eBay and give other people a chance that want to carry them or use them or collect them, whatever, to get those and in the process get some money back so I can recycle that money into other knives, try out other knives and see what I like and don't like. Um, I think we have all, oh, didn't make it all the way through. Oh well, I know this is a horrible skinning job, but kind of multitasking here. I don't really see much patina yet. This isn't the most acidic fruit, but it will still develop a patina. I did wash this mat. I'm going to eat this with peanut butter after this video. I love apples and peanut butter. One of my favorite snacks. But as I was saying, I've been selling my a lot of my knives for my collection. I think I'm down to probably at 50. So I, I reduced my collection by over half. And I, bas I basically sat down and I was like, which knives do I kind of for force myself to carry because they're just there and I want to make use of them? Because we all have those knives in our collection that we strive and we want to carry like, dang, I just, that knife is beautiful or that knife it just fits perfectly in my hand, the action is great, whatever. And you just want to carry that knife for the whole week. And then there's others where maybe you got the knife, you didn't like how it looks or you didn't like the action, the fit and finish, whatever. And it just sits on the shelf and just sits there and looks pretty, which is fine. I know some people have a lot of Sage Queens or they want to, collect different um, styles and patterns of knives even if they don't even really like the pattern you know 
but I was like, man, I don't have a lot of room for my knife collection. I do want to recycle some of my money because I was getting out of hand for a while and just, man, I was spending so much money on knives, but there's just so much, there's only so much time to carry a knife. You know, you can't give every knife equal love, equal carry time. And especially if you're trying to do a, a user video or, um, you know, a video like that, it's kind of hard to, oops, trying to, it's, it's hard to post videos like that of you doing like a 30 day carry if you have 150 knives, you know, if you, if I only posted videos of me carrying a knife for 30 days and me describing how, how, how the experience was. I'd post a video every month and I, I don't know. I just wanted to post more videos than that. And some people do that. Oh, shoot. Oh, see, I'm trying to cut myself, but sorry, I'm rambling on. So you can see the patina is already developing. See that kind of grayish coloring on the blade. And that's all from the acid. From the apple juice, it is responding to the carbon steel. Man, that's that's beautiful. It's so cool how carbon steel reacts like that so fastly. Kind of gives your knife some character, kind of some uniqueness, because obviously no patina is the same. I've forced patinas before. I've blackened the whole blade. It looks cool, but something about getting a natural patina on your blade kind of tells a story in a sense. Maybe not, maybe I'm crazy, but I know a lot of people love carbon steel because a lot of it, it's very easy, very easy to sharpen and people can get a generally a pretty good edge on the blade in just a few minutes on a sharpening stone or a straw. I'm going to try to, cut more of this apple to get more exposure to the blade. Uh, let's see here. And this is a factory edge. I just got this knife maybe a week ago. This is a factory edge. You know, Case has a reputation of having round tips. And that tip is, it's not the most horrible I've seen from Case, but it's kind of round. It's not the, sh the pointiest. This was a $50 knife. I just wish they had a sharper point. But for the money, it's such a great deal. USA made carbon steel, bone handle, pretty good action. Also, if you can't hear the knife opening and closing clearly, it might be because I'm trying out, oops, I'm trying out a mic right here. So my voice will sound a lot clearer but it doesn't catch up a lot of the outside noises and sound like cars passing by or crazy wind. It won't, it'll kind of muffle out that, but it will catch my voice a lot better. Yeah, look at that. It's getting darker and darker. Here. It's kind of cool how, <laughs> I'm not sure this is weird or not, but you can kind of smell. If you cut something with the carbon steel and it starts developing a patina, you can smell the the reaction. It has a different smell. I'm not sure how to explain it. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced it, but if you smelled your blade without being weird, you'll smell the patina. Yeah, love this peach seed. But with carbon steel, it does have its downsides, obviously. You have to take care of it. So if I cut this apple and then didn't even rinse it off, I just closed it and then put it on my shelf or let it sit in my pocket for a day, it would rust. It would develop the bad brown rust. So you do have to wipe the blade off. I usually even rinse some water, get that acid, and then I'll put some olive oil on the blade just to protect it. I use olive oil because a lot of the times I am cutting food with my knives. So I don't want some crazy weird 
oil that I shouldn't be eating on my blade. But I think this is the end of my video. Let's see. Yeah, developed a pretty good patina already. I'll compare it to, where is this? Oh, yeah, a Stockman. Hopefully we can see how. Yeah, there we go. There's a CV steel and carbon steel. So pretty comparative patina wise. Alrighty. Well, thanks for watching guys. Enjoy your day. Hopefully I'll be posting more videos in the future and I'll see you next time.